can you ask him what's the best glue to sniff? Uh, well, it depends on what you're going for, I, I guess. I mean, rubber uh, cement. Uh, epo epoxy smells really good. Oh, does it? Yeah, it does smell really good. Oh, God, do you like the smell of gasoline? I drank gas one time, <laughs> and uh, I have never liked it since. <laughs> bap, bap, bap. Dusty Slay's here, guys. Let's get right into it. All right. <laughs> let's talk about your, your let's ca filling cavities. Well, I was saying I had some dental work done during COVID before you got into Dude, it. Dude, I love nothing more than a man that calls it COVID. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> a lot of people have been harassing me lately saying that I say T's after all of my D's. But I'm telling them that I'm just pronouncing the full word. <laughs> I'm really sounding out the D's. COVID. COVID. <laughs> you know, I like to get the whole word in. This is Alabama all for All these you. letters are in the word. Let's use them, you know? <laughs> Do you say Salmon. So no, I worked at a seafood restaurant, so I gotta. I'm, not, I'm a sam. You know, growing up though, I would have said salmon. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why do guys, as soon as they are near a table, have to do this? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I have to touch everything. You I don't do know what's going on with me. I you strike me as the kind of man that walks into a house and has to like find where the the studs are. Yeah, I t you know, I I like to know what's going on in a place. <laughs> We have a very nice house, so I don't, you know, I don't even know a lot about what's going on. You're a guy who's like, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. What are guys doing when they when they well, hit a wall? Yeah, I mean, that's where you want to know where the stud is. If okay. you're, Because, uh, you know, you want to hang a picture. You want to make sure you get it in a two by four. But you have a wife at home. We're not together. You're just here for a podcast. Why? Yeah. Just in case emergency. Well, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> you might have a, po you know, might be like, can you help me hang this? And I want to <laughs> know where it's at, you know? I want to know right away. I like it when a man's like, you guys always have to know how sturdy something is. Yeah, well, you know, you also, it's also a way to admire what so you're like, oh, that's a good table. That's a good table. Maybe <laughs> I want a table like this. <laughs> I'll feel it out and I'll ask you where you got it. And then maybe I'll look into it. Did you, you come to my house and then you got like, no, that's my table. There you go. I, it was just funny because guys, when they sit down, they got to go, anyway, so. Yeah, you know, you know, I, you know, you know. Is it, did you, oh, we're just. <laughs> we just want to see what's happening, you know. It's not. It was clean. It was very clean. There was no. Uh, there was no dust on it. It was. Well, Bobby Lee was here recently, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't touch anything. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm dirty, you know. So. Okay. So. I'm, okay. So sorry, I interrupted you, which I am trying to not do anymore. But I'm so excited to meet you and goof off with you. Well, I'm pumped to be here, and I'm okay with it. You know, I do a lot of podcast. You know, I do a podcast currently with three other people, uh -huh. and we're you know the whole podcast is interruption, chaos. Well, yeah. that's what I was just like. Ugh because I started reading YouTube comments, big mistake, huge. And it's a lot of Whitney, you're interrupting. It, but comics, like, right when you know it's about to get boring, that's when you got to come in. Yeah, and you're like, I got a better joke. That's why I'm interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> this is my podcast, okay? Yeah. If I want to come in anytime, I will. It's kind of what we do here, guys. Yeah. So wait, let's talk. There's We just bonded before the podcast on how much we love talking about completely esoteric, random things. Um, we'll get to talking about how plants communicate in a minute, but getting dental work done over COVID, what did you have? Well, people, you know, they love to come at me about my science stuff, but I- um, Oh, they know. call me Ho Rogan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you also think you're a doctor and scientist too? Yeah. Oh, we're, oh, we're going to get along yeah. just fine. Yeah, well, yeah. it's like, you know, I went to a dentist. I had a little like black in between my teeth here. Which is, what is that? A permanent one? W yes. Well, these were my real teeth at the time. These uh -huh. are, some of these are fake now. Okay. But I went to the dentist and they were like, we're going to have to do root canals on all of these teeth. And I was like, that doesn't sound right to me. So I went to a holistic <laughs> dentist and they were like, we can grind this down, get rid of, rid of the decay and just put some caps on there for you. Since and you, you're a Virgo, we can probably just use a quartz stone. Yeah. And then you keep the roots. <laughs> okay, what's a holistic dentist? Well, they won't, mainly, they, they told me, they were like, it, you know a dentist is not holistic if they will do root canals. Which is, is that just, that's, because I recently was told that if I didn't uh, get serious about brushing a certain way, I was going to get a root canal in some way, and I didn't really know what it was. That means they just kill all of the nerves. Yeah, they take the nerve out, and then you have a dead, rotting, decaying tooth just <clears throat> sitting in your mouth. <clears throat> and then your body is always like, oh, there's something dead in here. We need to get rid of it. But it, it it can't. Sure. So it's like this tooth is completely fake. I had a root canal done 20 years ago and they pulled that 
tooth. And then I have a, this is a completely fake tooth because oh. it's better to have a fake thing than a rotting, I don't know, rotting, rotting. I don't Dude, know why I said it like that. You know that. how guys rotting. <laughs> <laughs> you know how guys don't like the word moist or panties? Yeah, panties is a weird it's one. A, Moist doesn't bother me. Panties is a weird dead one. Dead tooth is my number one, like, no-go phrase. Oh, yeah. Like, don't, don't. All of mine are living. I have all living like, teeth. Uh, but but this picture here, I was saying, that picture prior to COVID is, uh -huh. uh, is a much different. Uh, so those are your old teeth? No, these are my real teeth. But what are these? These are, are my, so this was, you know, this is me. Uh -huh. But I'm saying pictures before this. Yes. Were, oh, were copy that. But let me ask you, do your fake teeth glow in the dark? I don't think so. I think they do. Do they? We'll try. <laughs> Apparently, I think fake teeth glow in the dark, don't they? Well, let's see. Okay. Ready? Hold on. Oh let me do it. Let me do it. <laughs> Wait. I'll do it. The fact that you're... The fact that I'm you're, ready. You're, the, fact, <laughs> the fact that you're like, it's so cute. I swear, I went to school with a girl who had one fake tooth and I didn't have the heart to tell her at prom it was glowing in the dark, like neon. And it was like the night she was like, wanted her prom date to fall in love with her and she looked fucking batshit. Uh, see, I don't want to say this word again, but I think that's a dead If tooth. you say that <laughs> I again, mean... <laughs> I will have you removed. It's been a pleasure, folks. Don't write elements. <laughs> I think that's what that is, though. Glows in the dark. Yeah. Like all, like uh, like a black light. Maybe you have yeah. to put a black light Maybe on. Maybe a black light. Okay, because yeah. what are fake teeth made out of? Mm, I don't know that. Okay. I don't know the all answer. All right. Well, to let that. me go to alexjones.dental.co. Yeah, but this is you know these uh, you know they make you know they make a mold and it's uh, you know they, they they like the first dentist I was like I had a bit of a like a, a chip tooth in the in the what was that from. Uh, I don't know. I used to drink a lot. Eating pussy. And I, yeah, and I would wrestle with my buddies. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I, uh, you know it probably broke that way. I've okay. had a couple of car accidents. But the, um, so who knows? It just, it was just, like, I went to a dentist one time and he was like, does this bother you, this chip here? And I go, well, you know, not until you brought it up. <laughs> I didn't even know about it. But he fixed it. But over a while, over time, that, you know, what he fixed would wear off. Uh huh. So my teeth were, I was saying to these guys, my teeth were getting Alabama quick. <laughs> and I had to do something about See, it. See, you can say that. I can't. I got in so much trouble. So my dad's side of the family hails from West Virginia. I went on the James Corden show and was doing a joke about how, like, you know, my teeth are all fucked up because of my aunt and no one. I have I have soft gums is what mm. the dentist said. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, or insecure. My gums were insecure, oh, he yeah. said. And then I was like, yeah, I'm from West Virginia. I got in a lot of trouble and had to go to West Virginia and apologize. Wow. Well, you know, I'm from Alabama and I, you know, I'm, there's a lot of people there with great teeth. But I feel like I think it's more it's not like you're from this place and you're inbred and that's where your tea suck. I think it's just like, I was breastfed Mountain Dew. Yeah. We drank Mountain right. Dew Absolutely. all day, sweet tea. And then my mom's from Texas. We just drank sweet tea. Like yeah. we didn't drink water. So I think it was just the amount of sugar we fucking I drank. think you're right. I mean, that's why I ate cereal and I drank Cokes. It's, it's, Dude. And I was going to say, I used to say salmon because I <laughs> would eat it out of a can. I didn't even know it was a real fish. We made we would make salmon patties. We called them salmon patties. Oh, all. dude, we did those fish sticks, those weaver chicken nuggets, and then those fish sticks. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. And let me ask you. So, OK, so there's I'm just curious. The deep south is like, what's the difference? Like where where do you put your butter? Well, we were always a refrigerator butter oh, family. Oh, God. First dead tooth, and now you put your butter in the refrigerator? Well, like, no wonder you chipped your tooth. Yeah, You're eating well, rock-hard butter. You, you know what? Now we are a, we are a counter butter family. But growing up, my we were eating margarine. We weren't even doing butter. We had a tub of country crock. But here, where I come from, if you had a tub of country crock, the chances of country crock actually being in that tub was well, about 4%. Well, that's true. <laughs> That's you know what I'm true. Saying? Yeah, I mean, it might be some old spaghetti <laughs> that you thought was butter that That's you good. you were like, where'd the spaghetti go? I swear to God, <laughs> this is where I got my trust issues. As you open the fridge, you see the Lando Lakes tub, you see the country crock, and you go in to get your butter, and you're like, pimento cheese. Oh, yeah. Like, I didn't say. But then it's not even pimento cheese. It's like, it's mold. 
<laughs> it's something you thought this is cheese, but it, it's mold. Dude, just the number of times that I just went in to try to get what I needed to get. And it's just, you never, Philadelphia cream cheese. I was oh, like, there's cream yeah, cheese yeah, in the yeah. fridge. Finally, you open it and it's just like chip beef gravy. And you're like, fuck. Cream cheese was a real treat for us back. We did, really? We did wheat thins and Philadelphia cream oh, cheese. Oh, I still do it. I did yeah. it two nights ago with a little habanero jalapeno jelly. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh that's fancy. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, Triscuits, I feel like we've, as a society, started sleeping on Triscuits. I don't do a lot. I, I like a wheat thin. I mean, maybe I'll check. You, by the way, you said wheat thin and I heard Triscuits. That's oh, yeah. how fucking, as soon as you said cream cheese, I was onto Triscuits. Oh, yeah. You like Triscuits. That, that, do that's, I? That's like a thick, it's like a real it's thick. It's a thick, buttery. It's uh, like a frosted mini wheat. It is. <laughs> like with no frost. It's, totally, it's, that, it's so true. With frosted mini wheats, I used to just eat the glaze side. Oh, uh, yeah. Dude, the shit we did, no wonder our teeth are a fucking mess, dude. I when know. Toaster strudels, I used to just eat the icing. Lucky Charms, I used to just pick out the fucking marshmallows, yeah. right? When I eat uh, frosted mini wheats, I like to crumble up a few of them so that when I get to the milk at the bottom, there's a lot of wheat, uh, frosted mini wheat. Uh, I used uh, to drink the sugar milk. Oh, yeah. It's a miracle we don't have diabetes. Yeah, well, there's time. You know what just made me realize? You just made me realize something, which is like, you know, we talk so much about like haters and negative comments, comment section. Oh, yeah. I guess when I was a kid, I used to write letters to cereal companies. I'm literally just remembering this. I wrote letters to General Mills saying, please, put more horseshoe marshmallows in the... <laughs> there weren't enough marshmallows in Lucky Charms. That's constructive. I concur. Yeah. I, well, like, if people were writing on YouTube and being like, I like when you do this, do more of that. Yeah. That's what you're doing. You're yes, like, I true. like the horseshoe marshmallow. I wasn't marshmallow. just like, hey, Lucky Charms, you dumb, unfuckable cunts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I would never fuck you even though I'm married with two kids. You suck. Exactly. You know? Yeah. But I, it's actually kind of a miracle. With kids, are you worried about sugar and your tea? Do you think it's... Yeah, I try, you know, I try to give my kids better food than I was getting. Mm -hmm. I was like, for a long time, my daughter, I didn't, she didn't know anything about sugar. There was no, and then my parents would come up and they're like acting like I'm depriving her. <laughs> she, my, my daughter would, I would bring up broccoli and she would go, mmm, broccoli. <laughs> And she was like, broccoli was delicious to her. But mm -hmm. then my my parents kept coming up and giving her candy and stuff. And now I can't get her to eat broccoli. Oh, shit. And they think it's some big win. And I'm like, <laughs> you're destroying her life is what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> it really is that. Yeah. You're making her like an addict. Yeah. And fucking up her health. What kind of grandparents? I don't know. They just think it's so cute. Oh, grandma's giving her some candy. I'm like, this is poison is what this is. <laughs> I do think there is just some Southern wisdom when it comes to like what you should eat, what you shouldn't eat, like a connection to nature. Like, are you on some natural shit? Holistic dentist? Oh, rejecting yeah. the man. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know if any of the stuff works that I'm into, but okay. I am into, I do a lot of tinctures of herbs. So the so you pronounce T's at the end of COVID, but not the C in tincture. Tin, tin, is it tin, tincture? <laughs> yeah, I have a, it's a lot of consonants in that word. There's a lot going on in that word, tin, tincture. And what is, what's going on in these tinctures? You know, just various herbs. There's a doctor, uh, you know, I don't know if anyone's a doctor really, but his, it, it, you know. <laughs> Dude, you know what I'm saying? People dude, call themselves dude, doctors. Dude, I'm obsessed know. with you, dude. We are the same <laughs> yeah. person. I'm like, so this doctor that went to a university and got a license. <laughs> Who knows? But I keep buying things from him. Okay. And, you know, there, uh, you know, various herbs it might be like a blood circulation herb or a, a, a heart herb or like a <laughs> liver. <laughs> but, by the way, Dusty shows up at my house. He's at the gate and I walk up. He's holding fresh rosemary. Oh, yeah. I that still he, have it right here. <laughs> That he's plucked from a bush. Yeah. He's like, I, can't, I love it. <laughs> it's, it's, well, that's the first thing I noticed. I pulled up out here. You have rosemary, flowers everywhere. Mm -hmm. Bees are all over it. I'm into yeah. bees big time. Bee, big time. Big everybody. Yeah. People act like that. Oh, the bees will be fine, but nope. they're not doing well. Nope. Nope. It's bad news. Yeah. Do you think it's from the 5G? Do you think it's from pollution? I think it's probably from everything, yeah. right? It's like 5G became like a conspiracy and everybody, it, but I'm like, well, maybe it's not anything malicious, right? But we have these cell phones that we can pull up anything we want at any time, right? 
There's got to be something out here. I'm sorry. It goes to space, comes back, and our body stops it. Yeah. From from the laser beam that went to space. Yeah. Can't be good. Yeah. It's, so there's got to be something out yeah. here, right? Yeah. And the bees, you know, they're just out here trying to make it. They don't have <laughs> phones. They don't know what's happened. And they're getting new signals. I had a really depressing thing happen with bees. So as you saw, I have lots of bees. And in the summer, it's really hot and they start drinking from the pool and they are floating in the pool. Do you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. And I go in and I try to rescue them and I try to rescue them. Yeah. I'm like rescuing them. I'm like putting on Instagram, whatever. This is during the pandemic when we were all desperate for content. My yeah. hair was also blue. I had to do a lot of things for attention. But I genuinely, it like eats me up when a bee's drowning. Yeah. And so I'd pick up the bee and, you know, I'm giving it mouth to mouth. Um, <laughs> and this bee expert reached out to me and was like, hey, just so you know, any bees that are out getting water, they're forager bees and they're going to die within the next like 24 to 48 hours anyway. Oh, well, that doesn't sound like a very nice <laughs> bee expert. Yeah, he's got two days to live. F it. You know what I mean? Who cares? He's only got two more days. Just let him drown. <laughs> I like, I was just like, ah, six more hours, buddy. I want you to live it out to the end. <laughs> yeah. I rescue senior bees <laughs> yeah. who are about to die. What a weird thing. Imagine you're in the hospital and the doctor goes, you got two days to live. Let's just kill you now. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. Uh, everyone go home for the weekend. Okay, I want to hear more about these herbs. Well, you know, so I just, you know, you drop, you know, you put a little bit in water and you just drink it. And, okay. you know, and I've just been into it. I've kind of gotten uh, uh, weirdly lately obsessed with like my liver and I just mm. want my liver to be good and strong. Has your liver been through a lot? Uh, it has. I haven't drank in 12 years, okay. but uh, I used to do a lot to it. Okay. I used to... I drank enough, you know, for a, for a lifetime, I think. What was your drink? Oh, uh, I was mainly a beer guy, but I would get into bourbon. Okay. I liked, you know, I would get, I would have a couple of beers and then I would go, you know what, let's turn it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's do a shot. And then, you know, we would get some shots going. And then, you know, I had a lot of drinking buddies. Uh -huh. So we get some shots going. We're like, that was fun. Couple more beers, another shot. And then you just, you know. Can I ask you a question? Sorry, we're getting back to the herbs. Like, it is hard to hang out with people without drinking. Yeah. It get or or podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be doing something. Right. Like a bunch of guys hanging, you have to be watching the game, you have to be drinking. It is awkward to be like, "Hey, want to just get dinner?" Like you can't really do right. that. That's why I like cigars now. That's my thing, right? Yeah. Okay. I go hang out with people and have cigars and as I see my cigar is about to be done, I'm thinking I got to get out of here. <laughs> like the moment the cigar is done, I'm like, well, I'll see you guys. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like a real ashtray for cigars, though. Sometimes I'll be with my friends and I, like I know they don't smoke a lot of cigars and I'll be done with mine and I'll see them kind of struggling with it. And I'm like, if you want me to take over, I'll go ahead and take over. <laughs> and then I can keep hanging because I have something to do. I have something I want to give you downstairs. It's this like these cigarettes that are just herbs. OK. And they're called like wolf cigarette something and uh i think you might like them all right I'm you into know it. okay so these herbs let me the i have i started doing instead of doing coffee again in the afternoon i have pine oil and you just oh you just, yeah. it wakes you up it gives okay. you like a little bit of a wake up i think the smelling of herbs is really effective it is where you live though it's really nice it's like just nature wise yeah. it's so nice you gotta it do just, it it's like every time I come to, like California, I like, I like, but LA, you know, it's a big city and it just feels yeah, like there's a all, toxic zombie land yeah. full of fentanyl heads. Yeah. And there's a lot going on, yeah. but you come out here and it's like, you're like almost like at the end of LA. I have no idea where we're at geographically, uh -huh. but it's uh -huh. like, we got to the end and we're like, oh, green pastures. It's, I got, I dude, I, and it, what you're saying, I feel like you're the right person to talk to about this. Like. You know, I go outside every morning barefoot and stand on the oh, dirt. Oh, yeah. I'm all about grounding. The grounding thing, getting yeah. the electricity from the earth. When you're in a city and you've got shoes and then you got pavement, it's like you're so disconnected from yeah. the, the like good electricity of the earth. I was so tired all the time. I was depressed all the time. I was just like manic. I can't live in a city. It's just not healthy for me. Yeah, it's hard. You know, I, I took a long Uber ride in LA one time and I was like, I felt so bad. And I mm. got out and I just like grabbed a tree Ugh. because I. I felt like that I was grounding because the tree is, you know, it's like a different way of grounding. But I feel like 
when I grab a tree, I feel like it's pulling things. In LA, you out can't grab me. a tree without consent. It <laughs> yeah. does have a l- <laughs> yeah. Well, that is true. Time's is, up on you true. and that tree. Okay. <laughs> that is wow, true. Toxic. I didn't hug it. I just grabbed okay, it. Good. I just grabbed it. <laughs> yeah. Up, up here, round the shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like a good to see you kind of thing. <laughs> oh, hi, everyone. Real quick, I am going on tour. It is called the Big Baby Tour. It is starting this summer. I'm going to be in Alabama, Missouri, Mississippi, Las Vegas. I will be at the Mirage on July 6th. Yes, I'm looking at my computer because there's no way I can memorize all these. I'm going to be in San Francisco at Cobbs working out new material, Tempe, Arizona, Tulsa uh, on October 9th. Then I'm going to be in Kansas City, Dallas, Texas, Austin, Texas, Houston, Texas, Erie, Pennsylvania, New York, New York. I'll be at the Beacon Theater. Theater, September 28th. Grace O'Malley um, from Brie Uncut is going to be featuring for me. Then I'm going to be going to Charleston, South Carolina, Durham, North Carolina, Washington, D.C., the Warner Theater, Atlantic City, Chicago, Illinois, Atlanta, Georgia, Nashville, Tennessee, Denver, Colorado, Salt Lake City, San Diego, Orlando, Jacksonville, Boston. I'm doing two shows in Boston. Holy shit. We added a show at the Wilbur Theater, and then I'm going to be in Connecticut at the Fox Words Casino. So come see me because I'm going to get Lyme disease and perish. I'm going to demonstrate the magic of the sh tape, okay? Sh tape, here it is. Look, it's stretchy, it's sticky, goes on luxurious. Watch this. Hmm. Sh tape and sh sleep. Okay, last time I tried to sleep, let's be honest, I struggled, okay? I struggled with waking up with, God, what is worse than waking up with a dry ass mouth? And you're just like, why is my mouth broken? Okay, I don't think my brain has picked a lane in terms of where to breathe out of when I sleep. And it is shocking to me as an adult that I'm still like a weirdo mouth breather. Embarrassing, okay? Cause then I have to like drink water and that leads to a whole thing where like when you're getting water to deal with the dry mouth and I have to like check my phone and then I'm buying crow feeders and there goes three hours of sleep down the toilet. I'd say it was a nightmare, but that would imply that I actually get to sleep at some point. I would love to have a nightmare. And shter tape. Imagine if you were able to wake up feeling more rested without a stuffy nose. Imagine if you were able to put on mouth tape that covers your mouth, stays on all night. Picture yourself being able to wake up without your partner yelling about your obnoxious loud ass snoring. This product allows you to facilitate better oxygenation of the blood as your nose filters, warms, and humidifies the air prior to reaching your lungs, okay? They are bigger. They are stickier. They are comfier. Shh, tape. Nose. They can increase your quality of sleep and they want you to get started ASAP. To help, they are giving you a chance to buy Shh Tape for 50% off using the code Whitney50 on their website, Shh Tape, S-S, oops. <laughs> Maybe if I get better sleep, I'd be able to read this. Shhtape.com, S-H-H-T-A-P-E.com. And sleep tonight with Shh Tape, a better way to mouth tape. Connect with us on Instagram and Facebook at sh, S-H-H underscore tape and share your success stories. Shtape.com. And doesn't hurt coming off, weirdly. All right, y'all, it's 2024, so let's talk about something important. Injuries. If you're injured by negligence of another person, you deserve to get paid and to have it made rain on you. You know what I mean. Life can be wild sometimes, and one person's negligence can result in another person's settlement. If you're in an accident, not calling a lawyer, what are you doing? You could be leaving money on the table, you nutcase. When you're seriously hurt, your injury could be worth millions of dollars. If you're ever injured, check out Morgan and Morgan, okay? Look, here, being the mother of a three-year-old, that's hard. Oops. Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury law firm. You think that happens by accident? No. They have over 100 offices nationwide and more than 1,000 lawyers with over $20 billion recovered for over 500,000 clients. Morgan & Morgan has a proven track record of fighting to get you full and fair compensation. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is so easy. I mean, look, having a three-month-old, that's hard. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan, that is 
easy. If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan and Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to forthepeople.com. What an incredible website. Can we just stop and appreciate the fact that Morgan and Morgan's website is forthepeople.com? Incredible, patriotic, dignified, spelled correctly. A dot com, not a dot net or a dot co or a dot xxx or whatever you weirdos are up to these days. Go to forthepeople.com slash Whitney or dial pound law. I mean, the fact that they got pound law makes me think they're just the best company. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not like pound law for hashtag legal pounding. <laughs> Pound Law, pound 529 from your cell phone. That's forthepeople.com slash Whitney or pound law, pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. We're so disconnected from nature and we're so like, you know, in our phones. But I do think putting any kind of nature in your body is going to go well for you, even if it's like placebo effect. Yeah. You know, I think you're right. I mean, I am. uh, Yeah, I love herbs. I got a lot. I grow a girl. A lot of thyme. I like uh, basil. Basil's uh-huh. really great. It smells good. I mean, I'm all about growing all kinds of plants. Milkweed, yeah, yeah. I'm just getting into that. But Dude, milkweed, too, because the monarchs are going extinct. So yeah. I have like a fucking monarchs everywhere now from the milkweed. Yeah. Dude, I'm just like, I'll, I just want to be a Disney princess, minus the dicks, minus the castle being made out of dicks. I want to be a yeah, Disney princess. Yeah, you know, I just want like a like a full, like I got some land that I'm I'm, I'm cultivating. I got some fruit trees. I got Talk I'm to trying, me about these fruit trees. Well, what fruits to, are we going? Well, I got, right now, they're, they're still early on, but I planted uh, peach, cherries, plums, pears, apples. Ooh. I've got some weeping willow trees, some oak trees. I got pecan trees and so walnut trees. So you're basically trees. raising rats is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to be wild. <laughs> But I, you know, it's funny. You have owl houses. I talk about having, uh, wanting to put up my owl house. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm, I wanted to put it in my suburb, the suburbs where I live. Mm-hmm. Cause, but I was, we got some rabbits and I didn't want the owls to get at the rabbits. Uh, I mean, I like the there's rabbits. There's a lot of them. The rabbits eat a lot of my stuff, but I like them. I mean, rabbits are kind of fancy rats. I know they are. Am I, I like, no, they are. I don't know a lot about rabbits. Don't come for me, rabbit people. But I've never, like, I don't feel like you can reason with a rabbit. No, I agree. I put up this, like, kind of log thing around a fence. It was a hole under the fence. So I mm. built, like, a little log thing yeah. to where the rabbits could come under. But they they were already coming under, but now it looks cool, right? <laughs> so when I put it up, I was out there, and I go, oh, there's a rabbit out there already. And I was, like, really looking at it, and I go, I go, it's moving weird. And it was a rat. It was a rat out there. <laughs> they were coming from a strawberries. But here's what I'll say. Rats, I think, are smarter than rabbits. Rabbits are just cuter than rats. I'm pro rat and pro crow. You know me. I've read a lot about rats and they are insanely smart. Right? Except they're, when they get in the rat king, when they all get each other's tails tie into each other and it's one big knot and they die. But besides that. Okay. I didn't, I did not get that far in there. I don't read the whole book. Of a anything. rat king. You know, <laughs> 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 you, don't know, you don't know about a rat king? I've started a lot of books. Dude, a rat like, king is when all their tails get tied together. Oh, wow. And they get stuck and they all die because they're just, they they embroil into each other. Oh, wow. Yeah, bummer. That's pretty It's like wild. a human centipede, but just rats. Yeah, and they do that to themselves. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. That kind of blows the whole smart thing. Well, it seems like some kind of like they're not meant to be that many in one place. I think it happens in like underground sewers in New York. Maybe those are the dumb rats. So they can't all be smart. And then other rats are like getting them to do that. There's a human version of a rat king. Yeah. Maybe that's why they call it Rat King, because the Rat King is getting them to do that. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Getting all the dumb ones together. Yeah. It's like what they do with us in music festivals. Yeah. <laughs> that's like our yeah. version of it. Yeah, or amusement parks. Yeah, or any, any 100%. Of those things. Yeah. yeah, like Black Friday. Yeah. That's our all Rat that. King. Yes. Too I, many in one place, never going to go well. Yeah. If only we had tails, then that would be wild. But huh? I think so, Kesha had a tail and um, she came on the podcast at Nashville Girl, uh, where you live now. And Kesha had Kesha, a tail? She, had, she was born with a tail and the doctor wow. cut it off. Wow. I know. That's wild. Dude, she talked about that on the podcast and I, it's, it, it's rare I'm like speechless. Yeah. It's rare I can't, like nothing comes out and I was just like. But my brain started, you know, the spinny wheel on the computer. Like yeah. I was just like rebuffering stream. Wow. Yeah. 
I got somebody to do a country version of Take It Off by Kesha. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good country song. Dude, she's great. I love her song um, about um, uh, Fancy. Fancy where she talks about going to like Applebee's for dinner. Can't remember oh, the name oh, of it. Oh, is that Kesha? Yeah, that's oh, Kesha. Okay. All right, yeah, she's, I know that song. She's the greatest. Yeah. Are rats smarter than rabbits? I love rabbits. I mean, I, I feel like if, you know, rabbits are very attractive. Maybe they don't have to be as smart. They are more intelligent. Than, yep, rats are extremely smart, empathetic. Many people don't think of rats as being smart, but they're actually very intelligent and easy to train. They're more intelligent than rabbits, gerbils, and guinea pigs. What about squirrels? No Their mention. intelligence is why rats are so often used in psychological studies to help understand human behavior. Wow. Squirrels are, I think, like, like the Russians of rodents. Like they're real strong. They're just sick. They're they're sick. They're um, domineering. They're arrogant. They, they are arrogant. That's for sure. They dress wrong for the weather. They're in like fur coats for no reason. They're just like Russian. Like you know what I'm. You know yeah. when you see Russian people and you're like a fur coat. Today. I don't know all these things about Russians, but I I'm picking up what you're putting down about. I'm squirrels, making though. it up as I go. Okay, along. all right. If that if I, that's not abundantly I, clear, I, I just know I I worked with some Russian guys one time when I waited tables and they came over as exchange students and I remember drinking a lot with them and yeah. they offered to beat a guy up for me one time <laughs> and I said no. I said don't do it. <laughs> They were not big guys, but they were like, we'll do it. Dude, Russians are so fucking gnarly. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to think of, like, what state has people that are as gnarly as Russians. Maybe, like, Boston. I don't know. I'm trying to think. So, Russians, like, there's no concept of, like, there's no morality. There's no, you know what I mean? Like, I... Also, your alternative, if you're, like, a young person in Russia, is either come here and fight people, yeah. whatever, at restaurants... Or, like, be standing by to be a double for Vladimir Putin. Like, you're going to have to get plastic surgery to look like Vladimir Putin. That's just, yeah. like, the fate of a lot of people in Russia. Yeah. It's like someone's at the, someone's like, hey, dude, come with me. And you're like, oh, fuck. Do I look a little bit like Putin? God damn it. Oh, I've yeah. You know what? When I saw uh, Creed two and he fought the Russian, uh, I don't know if you saw the movie, uh -uh. Creed two. he fights the Russian, he beats the Russian, and I felt bad for the Russian, right? What? Because well, I'm like Adonis Creed is like very oh, he's very wealthy. He has a great life. And the Russian now just goes back to Russia as a loser. He gets kicked <laughs> out of uh, you know, the popular circles and he's just like uh -uh. Re real poor. What kind of American are you? I didn't Dusty? want him to be You realize the your main job as an American <sighs> is to hate Russia. That's your only fucking job. It's all we need from you. I know, but Whose I just Whose side are you on? I just felt so bad for him at the for end. This guy? Yeah, he look. This is a he's bad. This is, this is a bad look he's for him. He's got four bear cubs in his basement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That he's gonna spend the rest of his days I with. No, I he mean, doesn't I, even have to mail her the bride. She lives in the same Adonis building. Adonis Creed, his life was so good, and I was like, he could afford the loss. See, this is why you're a comedian. Yeah, we're ble bullies, but secretly bleeding hearts. Yeah. But here's the thing, right? I had a I had to move out of my last home because a ru my Russian neighbor jumped my fence, cut down ten of my trees. Oh, you this will turn you. Oh yeah, cut down fully grown, I think 60, 60 foot tall yeah. uh, pine trees. Wow. Cut them down, unbelievable. Yeah, she and should go back to Russia. He, he and then I, I. Why did I think it was a woman? I that's some catty shit. Yeah, <laughs> okay, okay. Some catty shit. <laughs> She came over with her nail clippers. Yeah, yeah. It was it was it was interrupting her view. She wanted yeah. to take selfies, and the trees were in the way. <laughs> that is funny. Comes over, and then I go to confront him. This motherfucker had when I tell you he looked like Kato Kalin had like a long. He was like blonde Theo Vaughn, but like like super big dude. Jeans had the stitching, like the yellow stitching on the side. Oh, yeah. Cowboy boots. When a Russian is wearing cowboy boots, get the fuck out of yeah. there. Turn around, you're gonna lose. There's no hope for yeah. you, dude. And then I go up to him. I'm so pissed off. And I was like, you cut down my trees. And, blah, blah, blah. and I was, and he goes, how do you know they're your trees? In like a thick Russian accent. I'm not going to do the accent. I don't want Lauren Michaels calling. Um, and I was like, uh, uh, you cut down my trees. And he's like, how do you know they're your trees? And I'm like, because there's a fence. He goes, how do you know the fence is in the right place? Wow. They're all Donald Trump. All of them. Yeah. Like you cannot, well, they're unbeatable. In a way though, you hate when people people get you on something. Like I put up a fence and my neighbor was like, I was putting the nice side towards mine. 
instead of the nice side towards his. And he goes, you got to put the nice side no, towards my no yard. No way. And I go, why? It's my fence. I'm building the fence. He goes, in the because we have a homeowners association. He's like, in the homeowners association charter, it says that you have to put the, and I'm like, I was so mad because I didn't know what it said. And I'm like, oh, I bet, and I bet he knows. <laughs> I bet, I go, all right then. And I had to switch it. Wait, 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 wait. I was so mad. I cussed him a little bit. Now we're friends again. He's an old man. <laughs> and we had nothing, we had done nothing but small talk each other uh, for two years. How did he and approach I told you, the though? man to go F himself out there. And I was like, where did that come from? Uh, but But you had already put the fence up? It was in process of being put up. Luckily, those guys were very nice and they're like, we'll switch it. They were Is that that's just homeowners? That's not a law. Yeah, just homeowners, yeah. You have to put I've still not read it. But I bet he has. That's all I mean. What if, this, but by the way, I could see him being the motherfucker who's like, well, it's in the manual. He yeah. hasn't read it. You haven't read yeah. it. There's probably no manual. I know. But he knows you're, you, the chances of you reading it are so small. The chances of you changing the fence are higher than reading yeah. it. That's why it's like the Russian guy's like, how do you know the fence is in the right place? And you're like, ah, I, I don't. don't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. But it, there's, there, we have to agree on something. Yes. <laughs> if it's in the, why would they have put it here it's, then? It is true though. And he he should have not. Have done and that. then he said he was like, uh, "Well, then I would like to talk to the zoning office." And I'm like, "I'll get him on right now." What the fuck's yeah. the zoning office? Yeah. Like you're just like, "God damn it!" You have yeah. so much leverage, and it's so expensive to get someone to survey anything. Oh, God, it's a nightmare. Yeah, it and, takes forever. Yeah, and it's like L.A. and things move around, yeah. and the, it's falling into the ocean, and who knows? What There's the fuck? probably a fee just to get a survey guy out here, and, and they don't know shit either. And yeah. then they're gonna come out here and find a bunch of problems that I don't want to know about. Right, that's yeah. the problem. Is if you bring someone in your home to survey something, be ready for them to say, "Oh, you know, the gutter's cracked under your thing," and oh, you're like, yeah. "I don't want to hear any of this." Yes. Yeah, they go, we found the line, but we also got some other stuff. So I am very obsessed with like fire stuff. Like there's lots of fires in California. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and like I do like voluntary evacuation of animals, horses and stuff when there's fire. So I'm like pretty, I was in a fire as a kid. Maybe that's why, I don't know. But I'm like obsessed with like, you know, once you're a homeowner, all of a sudden the things you care about are just so crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're just like, oh, really? You're going to put a Marianne Williamson sign on your lawn? Okay. I was like, never afraid of tornadoes until I owned a house. All of a sudden, you give a shit. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And other people's behavior all of a sudden affects you, so you become the citizen's arrest person. So I'm up at the top of my hill. You see where I live. I live in like a canyon, and it's like a dry season. I'm hiking, and there's these... Okay, so couple things. There've been a lot of fires in California, mm -hmm. LAFD, because I work with them. I asked them one time, I was like, what's up with all these brush fires? And he just was like, brush fires. And I was like, what do you mean? What, what, what was that? And he was like, there's no brush fires. It's homeless people, uh, homeless encampments. Jeez. And I was like, wait, what? Like all these fires are homeless encampments? He's like, yeah. And I was like, well, why don't you tell people? He's like, because people would just start taking baseball bats to homeless people. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, stop the fires. Okay. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean you know what I mean? I mean, baseball, you do a couple of baseball bats and then people are like, you know what? Let's not do any more fires. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and so I'm at the top of my hill and there's this like 16 year old and his girlfriend and they're like smoking weed at the top of the hill or whatever. And I'm not the person that's like, stop smoking the ganja, do whatever. But I was like, oh, you guys can't smoke up here. It's like a fire zone or whatever. And uh, the kid was just like rude to me or something. And then I was like, no, no, seriously, like if you're gonna do this, like just vape, like go get yeah. a vape or something. And the guy goes, well, who the fuck are you? Some 16 year old. And I go, <laughs> I literally went, I'm LAFD. Oh, <laughs> I yeah. said, no, I made up a fake thing. I was like, I'm LAFD, like Woodland Hills division. Like I'm, I'm in like a Lululemon, like tits out, like fake thing. And they kind of looked at me like, what? And I was like, <laughs> like, you can kind of call someone's bluff with a weird lie if they can't check it. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. I was saying. like, I'm undercover today. Yeah, you're lucky I don't and, take you to jail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I just like, as I was saying it, I was like, I could see being like, it's in the owner's manual that you can't do that. I can yeah. see myself saying that to a neighbor. Yeah. Like, you don't know about the homeowner's pamphlet? 
<laughs> right. Volume four, Roman numeral F. Yeah, when you get called, you're like, ah. I think you need to read this manual. I should read the manual. I think, I think and then if he's wrong, I'll go switch the fence myself. <laughs> go, guess what? Just read the manual. No, he has to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I live for a petty neighbor dispute, dude. There is a fucking show in England about neighbor disputes that escalated to one of them killing the other one. And it's basically like this motherfucker didn't mow his lawn and then they end up killing each other. Wow. Yeah, it gets wild. I mean, it, it's not really a problem for me. I mean, most of my neighbors are, you know, just as, you know, we're like a same kind of redneck level. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But this guy... He's a little older. He has a very nice lawn. He didn't want the fence because he liked the open space of my yard and his yard. But I'm like, I got kids now. I can't have them run into the road. Yeah. I got to trap them in. Yeah, 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 so yeah. So we yeah. really talked about it. I thought we had it really worked out. But uh -huh. I feel like deep down, he uh -huh. was still a bit bitter about it. There's something so primal about someone's behavior, like... 80 feet away from you. Yeah. It's it's tough. <laughs> but it's like, you know, it's like also when you live close, it's like, I like talking to them, but I don't want to talk every time I'm in the backyard. You got to. You, know? you have to. But the fence, now you're like, you, you don't you don't see them. Oh, it's a tall fence. It's not that tall, but you can, it, there is some division. You, you live next I mean? to Brad Williams. You can't see him. Yeah, yeah. Over the Actually, fence. my neighbor behind me put up an eight-foot privacy fence, which I don't think is allowed, but I didn't mind it. <laughs> I'm going to get some vines to grow up that thing. Okay, I'm excited about this. Here's the thing. I do believe you have to talk to your neighbors. Like, it's just the price you have to pay. Well, yeah. Well, I know all the neighbors. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm in with it. I'm just saying every time you go outside, are we having to jump into a conversation? You know why you do? So that when it's first week of March and the Christmas decorations are still up, you can go, hey, do you need help taking the Christmas oh, yeah. decorations down? I'm, if, you, if you're busy, like I, I, I got, got some time. I got one neighbor with still some stuff up. He puts, Dude. He put, he's has a two story he's, and, he, and it has lights on it and a deer, an inflatable deer <laughs> hanging. It's just deflated, <laughs> hanging off. And it's like, <laughs> his, uh, he had so many inflatables and they came down so fast. I thought, wow, I didn't expect him to get his decorations down this fast. But the rest are just there. I, I, it's, I'm, in a, I'm in a conundrum where my neighbors, they've got, I also am like, I for Christmas next year, want to go, let me turn, let me do your, because you can hire a company to just wrap the trees. You know what I mean? You're giving people work. It's not that, they look amazing. <laughs> These motherfuckers, bless their hearts. They got nine extension cords and it's like fuchsia. Some of the, some of the trees are blinking. Some aren't. Oh, yeah. Are you loco? Yeah. I mean, you're I mean, going to give gonna me a seizure. It, if yeah. you're going to do it, do, yeah, do I mean, it. If you're going to decorate to look pretty and be festive, go ahead and do it right. I just, are we doing fuchsia Christmas? But also the bulbs are all different sizes. Like one's big. But I mean, what are we I have I have OCD. You guys, I can't do that. I will set yeah. your home on fire. This is giving me a migraine. So a lot of people have been asking me what I put on my skin. Besides baby puke and tears, both mine and my child's, I use Genucel. Gen 90, that's what I use. It's the new instant wrinkle cream from Genucel. Gen 90 instantly reduces the appearance of wrinkles anywhere you use it, around the eyes, the forehead, the crow's feet, laugh lines. It starts working right away. Honestly, this is the best endorsement I can give a product. I'm just going to be honest with you right now. I used to use the Skin Smoothing Paris Filter on Instagram and now I don't <laughs> like that's honestly like the most like I used to use it and now I'm like I kind of don't need it anymore I've never I've never looked better and I haven't slept in seven years so it, it there's no other explanation than the Genucel Gen 90 technology is luxurious nourishing Yep. It doesn't fix the speech impediment, but it is, it doesn't smooth out. <laughs> Put some on your tongue. Maybe it doesn't help it you read smoothly. <laughs> it's luxurious, nourishing, and silky smooth. And the tingle.
single makes you know it is working before you try expensive nonsense procedures. I've tried them all. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. Try Gen 90 first. Make your fine lines and wrinkles disappear. And right now, Gen 90 is on sale at Genucel, G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com, along with their classic, I guess it's XV moisturizer. This is their classic XV moisturizer. I love it. See, I'm half done with it at this point. Um, and then there's also an under eye serum. There's a dark spot corrector. I use it all. I hoard it. If there's any left, go buy it. Genucel, G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com slash Whitney. Get free shipping and free spa skincare essentials box. Genucel.com slash Whitney. Don't be an idiot. So when I started podcasting, an online store was not even in my wildest nightmares. Okay. Didn't even think furthest thing from my mind. Now I am selling my book. I'm fine and other lies because, and we look the same. Do not look exactly like the cover of this. Do I still look the same? Have I aged today, Pat? She looks a little older. Who looks older? Her? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> a few weeks, maybe. Good answer. Using Shopify to sell your product is so easy. Even I can use it. <laughs> <laughs> That's honestly the best endorsement for Shopify. <laughs> it's so easy. Even I can use it myself. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business, even if you're a comedian. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is here to help you grow, whether you're selling scented soap or, or selling cat costumes Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. I don't even know what POS is and I still know how to use it. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms and sell more with less effort. Thanks to Shopify magic, your AI powered all-star Shopify totally changed the way that I was able to reach people. And I figured out like basically how to tour based on what city people were buying my book in. So I started adding certain cities to my tour dates because I saw on Shopify that people were buying my book in certain cities, which is why I'm coming to see you in Chicago this fall and why I'm coming to you, San Diego, in the fall and why I'm coming to you, Beacon Theater in New York. Thank you, Shopify, for helping me with my tour dates and to know where people like me. Where they really like me. I mean, I wasn't going to go to Erie, Pennsylvania, but here we are and I'm going. I just added a bunch of new tour dates for the fall because you bought my book in those cities. Look at me just being a mogul. Take that, Mark Cuban. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the United States. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, as well as millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is here to support your success every step of the way because businesses that grow, they grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash Whitney, all lowercase, shopify.com slash Whitney. Go grow your business. No matter what stage you're in, shopify.com slash Whitney. I mean, we live in a business that was built on the back of a four-year-old toddler named Shirley Temple. Like, it's it. this is wild. It is weird to see Shirley Temple videos now kind of knowing a few things. Like, I don't even know a lot of things, but I see Shirley Temple videos and I'm like, this is not good. Dude. This is not feel there's good. There's not a mom in sight. There's no babysitter. It's just her and a bunch of, like, soldiers at war. Know, and she's, like, I, twerking I, on their I lap. Know, she's, I like, know. straddling a cannon <laughs> at war, like, in blackface. <laughs> You're I like, know. wait, what the fuck? <laughs> she know. was, but she was five in the yeah. movies, which means she was cast at four. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And she's she the thing. Ah, I can't stop with the Shirley Temple stuff. I feel like for some reason I was put on this earth to get justice for Shirley Temple. Sure, not only is she wearing little tiny baby mini skirts, but she has like bloomers underneath that are covering. I guess her diapers. Like some costumer made that, which is like, oh. The dress is too short, so we need to make the bloomers, the panties match. Why not just make the dress longer? Why can't yeah. you just wear pants? Or, I don't know, get an adult. <laughs> 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 you know? <laughs> No, don't, okay, don't be ridiculous, Dusty. Yeah, yeah. We need to watch this little dimpled peanut uh, yeah. <laughs> tap dance for men. 
And also the drink. I mean, as if you ever waited tables, the Shirley Temple is the worst drink to be ordered. It, it is. Just, like, it, there's something dark about it. It's dark and it's it's a lot of work. The bartender hates it. <laughs> I didn't know that. I, yeah. It's like Cherry 7-Up, right? Yeah, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, they go, it's Grenadine 7-Up, right. some cherries in there. You right. order it, everybody, oh, that's great. And then they go in the back and they cuss you and the bartender's like, why are you selling these? And you're like, I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't do it. A guy's grooming a teenager. I don't know. You take it up with Chris Hansen. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know what's going on out there. It is. It is wild. It is. It is hard sometimes to defend, and not that I try to in any capacity what goes on in in Hollywood. But I. It is helpful uh, to ask people because one time I was in, I think it was in Houston Airport, and I landed, and a bunch of people came up to me. It was like a group of like I don't know, a couple like twenty something year olds. And they're like, "Oh my God, you're when you're coming, right? And you live in Hollywood. I hear you guys eat baby blood. Oh gosh. And I was like, if you thought like that was true, would you really be talking to me? Like, I don't know how to respond to this. Is yeah. that what they think? Yeah. You don't really eat blood anyway. You would drink blood. Well, I would you think. could you know cook it I mean? up. Some people are eating their placentas. Yeah. I think that's more of a gelatinous, viscous Ugh. kind of consistency. But So someone asked you that just out, yeah. out in public, just was like, so you yeah. eat baby blood, yes. huh? Yes. It's like, oh yeah, all the time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah basically. I mean, I guess there's a couple things that made the adrenochrome rumor happen. Number one, there was like a stem cell facial that okay. was like. Oh, I heard some people talk about that. You know what I mean? Which yeah. is like, which I've done like PRP, which is they take your blood, spin it and like put it back. I don't know. It's supposed to help with baldness too. Okay. And after having a baby, I'm fully fucking bald. Anyway. Um, so it's that. I don't I don't know where the rumor comes from. Well, you know, from. there was also uh, in the movie Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, yep. they had uh, some adrenochrome that they were taking like a like a drug uh, uh, in the movie. And uh -huh. they said they got it from a Satanist. Uh-huh. In the so uh -huh. I mean, I remember seeing that movie, you know, 20 years ago. Right, 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 right. A, you know, when people started talking about it, it became a really wild scene. Totally. To look back, because before you're like, these guys are doing crazy drugs. Yeah, yeah. But when people start talking about it, then you go, ooh, that seems dark. Yeah, what else is what else are, what else else are is rumored to be going on in Hollywood? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you know, uh, I, I don't think anything is rumored that doesn't e end up coming out on some documentary later. Like, totally. I, I think didn't something just come out? I'm not, I just on TikTok a little bit. I don't watch a lot of documentaries, but yeah, I'll be yeah. on there and then I'm like, oh, something happened with this children's show or whatever. Oh, the Nickel oh, the yeah. um, Nickelodeon thing. Yeah, Nickelodeon with the show was runner. my show growing. I mean, my, Which, my network. But I it's love like, you mean to tell me the guy that decided to make TV shows about young girls is a creep? Yeah. Shocking. Well, like, I was watching like, Hey Dude. Uh, you know, that was like a dude rant show. And like, uh, uh, I feel like Mark Summers had a show where they were okay. like dropping a lot of slime on people's heads. I, and I, I've always thought that was weird. I've not heard anything bad about those shows. Though. I have always thought that was weird, though. The Nickelodeon slime thing has always struck oh, me as yeah. weird. But I, I think I went to uh, maybe Disney when I was a kid. And mm. I was like, I got, you know, I, I got to be in some kind of game. What if this was like a real reveal moment for me? But uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I think they gave me some slime. Like I was like I was like really excited. Was that white? Where did you get no, it? No, I got yeah. It was a guy. He was like, this is. <laughs> did you have be... to did you have to suck on a yeah. lollipop to get your slime? <laughs> Isn't that how everyone gets their slime? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, those shows were great. Yeah. I never hear any bad things about those shows. So I'm sure horrible things. Let's happen. hold let's, <laughs> let's hold out some hope. I think, yeah. I mean, it just I just don't think kids should be acting. I mean, it's also like it's tricky because I get why kids would watch kids' shows, but it feels like a lot of adults watch them too. And I'm like, if you really care what happened to Kimmy at school this week, like go to jail. Yeah. Kill yourself. I mean, I was recently told on YouTube I'm not allowed to say put a bullet in oh, there. Yeah. I'm not Jesus allowed. <laughs> we did a YouTube live earlier, and I said somebody needs to put a bullet in Bill Gates's, and he's like, "Stop." Oh yeah, yeah. You're not allowed to say yeah, that. Yeah, you can't say a lot of stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, um... don't shoot Bill Gates, guys. Don't. 
Yeah, there's a, a video where Bill Gates gets a pie in the face. I don't know if you've really? seen that one. It's like, where, a, it's like a young, really? It's like a young Bill Gates. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty a, funny. That's hilarious. The target was Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates arriving for a meeting with community leaders. Watch what happens when a team of hitmen meet him first with a pie in the face. <laughs> Gates was momentarily and understandably shaken, but he was not injured. The hit squad piled on with two more pies before one of them was wrestled to the ground and arrested the others for at least the moment and got away. But it's pie, you know, yeah, that's yeah. harmless. Yeah. Pie is harmless. He's, I mean, just he's genetically engineering like weird schmegma that he's putting on produce to make produce last for like two months at Costco. I think he grows all the McDonald's fries. That's right. He yeah. owns the land uh, where all the McDonald's fries are. Yeah. The guy's just a fucking dork and rich dorks are dangerous. And I think it's important that we keep our eye on this motherfucker. That's all. I think, yeah, we should keep our eyes on everyone all yeah, the time. You right. know what I mean? There like, a video. Did you see the video of Bill Gates talking about how we don't need trees? I did see that. He's he goes, like, what are we, the science people or the... <laughs> <laughs> you know? Tree people. Yeah. You guys in your trees were all like, wait, what? Yeah, he's like, we can't... Yeah, I mean, we're not... I guess people aren't saying planting trees saves the world, but why not be planting trees? They do. I mean, they do oxygenate the air, right? And clean I, the air. I actually watch a lot of videos. There's this guy named Andrew Millison, and he's like... By the, the way, I love that we say now I watch a lot of videos. Like, I read a lot of books. Yeah. Well, I'm not... I don't want to lie to you. I'm not reading a lot of books, but I... <laughs> I've started a lot of books. I own a lot of books. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's going out into like like uh, deserts in India and Africa and they're doing these tree projects and they're like bringing back uh, like greenery in the middle of deserts. They're like stopping desert spread. It's like really great. And they're building a lot of ponds. Like I'm into pond building now. That's my next thing. Right now I'm planting trees. <laughs> next, I'm, I'm going to get into pond building. Okay. Because... You know, they're just building, they have these, in Oregon, they have this, like, it's kind of like a mountain land where they have a big pond at the top and it's kind of fed by a solar pump that takes it up and then it goes down to other little ponds all along the way, creating uh, water for animals, for plants. If you don't make a show called Pimp My Pond. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hosted by Dusty Slay. That's what I'm talking about. That's a good idea. <laughs> This is how you're selling shows out this, here. You know look, what I mean? Every now and then you see why I get to live in the woods alone with my pit bulls and baby. Yeah. Uh, pin my pond. I'm all about it. But there's also something called, I'm going to get it wrong. It is called a, God, it's like there's an amazing video about it on um, YouTube about the reintroduction of wolves to Yellowstone. Okay. Uh, so they had taken the wolves out of Yellowstone because they were causing problems or something. And then it was a whole mess. Everything started dying, but the wolves were gone. So they didn't understand why everything started dying. I just watched a, a thing on 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 uh, the American chestnut tree. And Tell it was like, everything. it was like in the, you know, it probably would have been all over West Virginia. It was in the Appalachian Trail, all, all in the mountains, all in, in like that someone, and they had all these chestnuts and like people, it was a strong tree. People did so much with this tree. And then a guy brought in like these Asian chestnuts that had a certain disease that the Asian chestnut trees were resistant to, but the American chestnut tree was not resistant to it. So it killed them all, uh, at least most of them. And then all that the impact of that took food away from animals. It took the leaves weren't dropping on the ground, creating uh, this and that. And it just like, it changed everything. God, what the fuck is it called? Cast trophic. It's called a trophic cascade. Fah, that was annoying. Boom. Holy shit. You pulled it out though. God damn it. That's good for the brain to pull it out of there. Oh my God. I have no fucking brain power left. This baby just ate my brain. This is it. I love this shit. Wolves are great. We'll do this and then do you want to do a quick IG live? Yeah. Nice. Oh, I love them so much. Uh, yeah, I love when people, they come in and they're like, oh, we're going to fix this by changing a bunch of stuff. And nope. then they ruin it. Leave it alone. One of the most yeah. Exciting scientific findings of the past half century has been the discovery of widespread trophic cascade. It's always got to be a British guy. Cascade. Always. No uh, one if, else can narrate. If you narrated this, we'd think it was a <laughs> joke video. <laughs> I should do this, though. I should. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you let's see let's do this video with you narrating it and see if anyone thinks it's real science we should just re-release it <laughs> and 
exactly the same, but I'm narrating. That's going to be my new thing. The subtitles are on. I can just start it back at the beginning. Well, I would need to read it one time or I would embarrass myself. But... <laughs> <laughs> How well I don't read the first time. <laughs> you need a little dry run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, these words are pretty simple. <laughs> they are, but uh, they come at you quick, you know? As long as the word tincture is not in there, right. we should be good. <laughs> right. They, yeah, I mean, uh, you know. Oh, Look at these guys. Look at this. Wolves came back. First, of course, they killed some of the deer, but that wasn't the major thing. Much more significantly, they radically changed the behavior of the deer. The deer started avoiding certain parts of the park, the places where they could be trapped most easily, particularly the valleys and the gorges. Gorges! And immediately, yeah. those places started to regenerate. In some areas, the height of the trees quintupled. Quintupled! Oh, see, that's a bare word. valley side. Oh, God, I love bison. I want to say that. of aspen and willow and cottonwood. And as soon as that happened, the birds started moving in. The number oh. of songbirds and migratory birds started to increase greatly. The number of beavers started to increase because beavers. beavers. Like <laughs> and More and beavers. Custom engineers. They Dude, literally, they're like the word beavers in here. We have to get an English guy. Oh yeah, yeah. You can't have a southern guy <laughs> doing beavers. We got a lot of beavers in here now. <laughs> Stop talking about the Nashville <laughs> yeah. zanies. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do an IG live. Um, let's real quick though. I want to talk just in case things get too chaotic with our IG live. Your special is going to be out. It's out. It's out now. It is out now. Working Man on Netflix. Sick. Yeah. And this is you've had so many specials. Well, I did a half hour with Netflix before on the nice. stand-ups. And nice. then this is my first full hour special, but I got an hour on YouTube that I put. Right. It wasn't really a special that I filmed, but it was, you know, I just filmed an hour and I milked the clips to death. And then I just thought, well, let's just put it on YouTube. And it did very well. Yeah, no, I know. I've been yeah. jealous of you for a while. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. I always, I always nice. feel like that's the best compliment you can give a comedian. It's like, I'm jealous of you. Well, it's very nice to say. <laughs> I think it's good. Like, it's tricky because I feel like everyone wants the Netflix special and the Amazon or the whatever special. But having a special on YouTube is like so key. Like, I feel like I want to do that next, whereas I know everyone's trying to do the other way. But I feel like, you know, do you feel like you can do different material on YouTube that you could do on Netflix? Well, this, you know, I, yeah, I just think that I don't know. I kind of want to like, you know, somebody told me one time that Neil Young used to do this thing where he would put out an album and it would have huge success. And then he would immediately record another one really fast with his friends. They would get like high and drunk and just record another one. Cool. And it would be really loose and rough. And a lot of fans really like those the best. But they were, it was just kind of like, you know, you would have this super produced album and then just a rough, more rough recording album. I like that. I Me think too. that's really fun. Like you're giving... You know, you're, you're showing that you can do big things, but you're also uh, doing, still having some fun. Not that recording this special was not fun. I had a great time, but, you know, sometimes doing a club and just getting loose with it totally. is, is really a lot of fun. It's, it, that's what's so wild to me about specials is like, especially your demeanor and how like, like um, fun it is to watch you perform. Like sometimes then we are doing a special and then all of a sudden we're doing a special and oh, it's yeah. like we're a little tighter and we're a little more nervous and you only have one shot and you don't get to have that casual energy that you've earned like over time touring as much as you've been touring. It's hard to like capture that in a bottle. Like I kind of sometimes wish that I like have a great set just in a random city Don't and someone's like, we just shot that. Oh that's yeah. That's your special. And I'd be oh, like, oh, yeah. thank God you didn't tell me. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's... I've done, I've recorded an album, you know, back in the day, I would just record albums. I did one where I didn't tell anyone that I was doing it. I just, cool. I just was like, I'm just going to go out and do comedy. If this goes well, great. But there's no, like, I, I'm always in my head when I'm recording something mm. where like, if a joke doesn't go exactly the way I want it to go, I think the audience is like, ah, you chose that to record. <laughs> that was a joke you want to record. That's album worthy to you. That's what I'm in my head about. That's so fascinating. Right, right. If it, you know, you're like, I'm recording an album. These are my best jokes. And then a joke yes. bombs. They're like, Ugh. oh, that's, <laughs> that's your best, huh? <laughs> that's very interesting. That's what you're doing out here. Huh? Oh, it does. It puts a lot of pressure on everything. Yeah. To be like, because I do think a lot of what, like, 
how I can get through doing comedy is before you shoot it, you're like, well, this isn't done. Right. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? This is like we're still a work in progress. Yeah. Right. Oh, hey, everyone. Uh, Mom of the year, Whitney Cummings here. I have had so much trouble finding toys for my child. A lot of the toys that I've gotten that aren't from KiwiCo, I think are making my child dumber. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so KiwiCo, this is the Panda Crate. It's a bi-monthly subscription for babies ages zero to 24 months. It's perfect for brain building, play made fun. It's made with care. KiwiCo baby products are free of BPA, phthalates, and lead. <sighs> Why did baby products ever have lead in them? But I guess, thank you, KiwiCo, for not poisoning our babies. They use only non-toxic water-based paints and finishes. KiwiCo, the Panda Crate, supports your baby's rapid development with products that support child-led play and encourage open-ended exploration. Nurture your little one's growing brain through fun and engaging play. So it is hard to know what to do with your baby. They're very cute. Enter KiwiCo Panda Crate. They make these activities so we don't just sit there awkwardly in silence. You know what I'm saying? This is called the bead maze. And this works on the fine motor and finger control, tracking attention and focus and shape recognition. He's really right now into just like moving things and grabbing things. And then when I put it upside down, it blows his mind. I see his brain working. I see him like trying to figure out what it is. Uh, he's very into this doodad at the moment as well. It's like a uh, what would you call this? Like a, a robot head? The mirror puzzle. Let your child explore the puzzle pieces and lid with their hands and mouth. This is the coin box. Show your baby how to drop coins into the circle hole and then see if they can get them out again, which I believe is them learning um, object permanence. I just love the design of all these products. They're so simple. All these items match my home. Uh, nothing's an eyesore, which is number one on how I select toys for my child. And I have absolutely no shame about that. Oh, by the way, this was developed by a doctor. I believe he's in Seattle. Um, Dr. D, I think this is very cool. And he like explains what part of the brain each toy is stimulating. He's a pediatrician at Seattle's Children's Hospital and director of the Center for Child Health, Behavior and Development at the Seattle Children's Research Institute. It gives you these like teething tips. I actually need this right now. You Use drool bibs to keep things dry. Switch them out often. Your baby gets a drool rash. I, my baby has that right now. Is that what that is? Keep wiping away that drool and use barrier ointment cream to protect the skin. I love this child development. And then he explains all this stuff. Thank you, Dr. D. What a genius you are. Unlock brain building play with KiwiCo Panda Crate. Get 20% off your first month with code Whitney at Kiwi co.com slash panda. That's 20% off your first month at Kiwi, K-I-W-I C-O.com slash panda, promo code Whitney. Okay, Dusty Slay, we're live on Instagram. All we're right. live on Instagram. Boom. Dusty, I like Dusty a little bit too much, and we've been having just a very chill, casual conversation. Really great time. And yeah, we're talking about herbs, cavities, vitamins, all kinds of shit, and curious what you guys want to ask us about. Do you ever do IG Lives? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. I, I did one the other day for the first time in a really long time. Okay. You know, I when I talked about putting an owl house up, everyone thought I was crazy. I love that you have an owl house. I got a bat house in my backyard now. No bats yet. But... You don't have any bats yet. You got to put something in the bat box that attracts bats. It's like a specific herb or something. Oh, okay. Because this lady in Utah told me to put like bat guano in there. And bat you, shit. Yeah. You got to get that from a place. Uh-huh. I feel like I Etsy would have it. Yeah. I don't really have a, you know, I'll check that out. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I should. It should. It's probably easy. You just go online. You can buy anything. Can we you want. slow this down for a second? This yes. lady in Utah is qualified as she seems, as much of a zoologist as I believe she is. There's a lot of people in this space that are sorry for the pun. Number one, full of shit. Number two, she might be pranking you. Number three, just think if you were a bat, is that what would you'd want? Well, that's an interesting. Number three is very interesting. <laughs> it's like, oh, here's a new place. Here's a new, <laughs> oh, oh, come on, clean I up just, in here. I just, sometimes people say things that aren't true. Maybe she thinks it's true, but just like use your head. Yeah. Imagine you're showing up though and you're like, oh, here's a fresh bat house. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you just use the bathroom and move on? No, I just put in like a strawberry and see what happens. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. A welcome mat. Yeah. <laughs> I love 
love the idea that for some reason, like whenever you need to like deter an animal or attract an animal, like you need wolf piss. <laughs> yeah. You got coyotes. You got to get some wolf piss. I'm like, where am I going to get wolf piss? Like, what are you saying to me right yeah, now? Who knows? It's really from a wolf. But what then, if it's from a coyote and it's attracting them? <laughs> But then I, but I know the people procuring wolf piss probably don't know the difference between yeah. a wolf and a coyote. Yeah, if your job is to just collect piss, close enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Like, where are they getting wolf piss in Burbank? I'm pretty sure this is coyote yeah. piss. Yeah, <laughs> traveling across the country with. But it is amazing how we don't question the most batshit things. Like, yeah, put some batshit in the bat box. Like, all right, yeah. like put some wolf piss. Well, in here. I've been telling people for a while that that's what you got to do. I mean, I just took this lady at her word. She could have been drunk. I don't know what she was up to. <laughs> Dusty is the man. Everybody is. Okay, so there's certain flower seeds for the bats. Okay, we'll okay. look that All up. Right. Okay, don't use garlic. Okay, okay, okay. Guano bowls. Uh, everybody's so excited that Dusty Slay is on the podcast. Do you All guys right. have questions? Are you still friends with Chris D'Elia? Next question. <laughs> <laughs> can Dusty ride a horse? <laughs> I can ride a horse. Uh -huh. I don't. That, that's not something I do a lot, but okay. I can do it. Okay. Why don't you? I don't have any. Okay. And, uh, and I don't have a real need to do it. That's... <laughs> Like you don't need like for transportation. Yeah, I, I kind <laughs> you of have a, would, you have a car. <laughs> there is a part of me that wants to get a horse and start kind of going to you know going to town on the horse. <laughs> you know, and just and not even be weird about it. Just be like, hey, this is eco friendly. I'm yeah. saving on the gas. Totally. The horse loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Before this, he was just wandering in a pasture. That is such a fucking power move. <laughs> yeah. Like if you just would like pull up to gigs like on a horse. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Dude. Or the post office, yeah. anywhere. Just being like, I'm here to check my P.O. box. <laughs> I fucking love it, dude. They're banning gas cars in California soon. It turns out that electric cars are bad because the cobalt, like there's the cobalt yeah. mines where horse horses is the one. No clean it's clean energy. Yeah. We keep getting away from, you know, we we moved on from the eco-friendly too fast. <laughs> um horse okay. and buggy was the way. Okay, I'm into it. Um, okay, let's see. Ask Dusty if he worked at Lowe's in Somerville. Oh, you know, I didn't work at Lowe's in Somerville, but I used to sell pesticides to Lowe's in Somerville. Okay. Yeah. So I was in there yeah. doing work. Uh huh. What's your favorite pesticide? <laughs> well, it, you know, my favorite to sell was <laughs> we had a product called Triazicide. Okay. And it was a all around insect killer, which I'm. Is this oh, why so many women are infertile in America? I think so. <laughs> I'm 100% against it now. <laughs> But I was really good at selling it. I mean, what I was, was your, like, give me your, pitch. well, I, you know, I could, you know, I could tell you how many insects it could kill yeah. 100 and diff 180 different types of okay. insect species, which is so horrible now, <laughs> but I was, I was just able to rattle it off. I'm uh -huh. like, it's really easy to put out. It's the best. You uh -huh. want to get rid of moles. You got to kill your grub worms. Yeah. This will kill the grub worms. Your kids will be blind. You won't have to deal with them, you know, causing yeah. trouble. Yeah, the whole pesticide herbicide industry is, uh, you know, I guess it's necessary in some ways, but uh, I'm glad to not be a part of it now. But I I did used to go to the Lowe's in Somerville a lot. Mm. I don't know. Does that person remember me from there? I, I, that, <laughs> <laughs> that was as far as we got. That would be wild. You know, I get recognized for a lot of things, but. Uh, What's your go to fast food order, fast food spot and order? I don't really eat a lot of fast food. Okay, uh, someone made it. <laughs> but uh, what do I like? Uh, I like, uh, you know, I like uh, uh, Shake Shack. Is that Shake fast Shack. food? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do. Like, you know, it's Shake Shack with the fries in the milkshake. Yeah, I like Shake Shack. They got a good burger. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I get. I mean, I used to tear up some Hardee's. I like a Hardee's biscuit, dude. What the fuck happened to Hardee's, dude? I don't know. Hardee's biscuits were not a game. I they mean, were yeah. so good. I used to tear up a Hardee's, and and I've been out of McDonald's for a long time. I like Burger King a lot back in the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was into Chick Fil A for a while, but every time I eat Chick Fil A, my face burns a little bit. Now I don't know what it is. It's I think some, it's the homophobia. Yeah, maybe or some chemical there. I don't know. Whatever. Your it is, face. My burns face up? burns a little bit when. Not, Wait, what? <laughs> you can't see it, but I can feel it in my face a little bit when I eat Chick Fil A now. <laughs> um, and uh, it's not always just Chick-fil-A. Uh, various types of chicken will, but the chicken we had today didn't make my face burn. 
Yeah, I don't think Chick Fil A's <laughs> is chicken. Is any fast food actually chicken? Probably not. Have you seen? You haven't gotten into the deep anals of TikTok where it's like you see what McNuggets are made out of it. It just oh, looks like gum. I have seen McNuggets, yeah. Yeah, it's just gum. I gave that up a long time ago. Mm. Anytime you go, like I go to a club and I'll ask them, you know, I don't eat a lot at the comedy club, but I'll eat chicken fingers sometimes. And I go, is it, is this real chicken that you've breaded and deep frying or is this come in the chicken finger shape <sighs> and it's already fried and you deep fry it again? And it's like some weird chicken paste in there. What's y'all's favorite fiction book? Um, uh, you know what? The my, Bible. Uh, well, I um, <laughs> read some books now to my kids. Oh, yeah. Okay. So There's a book. <laughs> 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 There's a book called The Ox Cart Man. And I don't even know if it's, I mean, I guess it's fiction, but it's... Uh, <laughs> It's really great. It's definitely fiction. It's really great. I mean, I, I assume it's based off reality, the ox cart man. But, uh, What's it about? Well, <laughs> it seems like it would be a boring book, but it's about a guy. It sounds really boring. And his family, and they're loading up all the things that they made or grew throughout the winter uh -huh. and, or at, throughout the summer. And then he's going to town to sell all these things. He sells everything, even the ox cart and then his ox. And then he buys a few things, mm -hmm. walks home, and then they start the process again. It sounds so boring, but it is <laughs> my favorite book now. I'm just, I'm enraptured by Dusty's uh, pronunciations of COVID with a T. People love to say that I've been putting T's on my D's. But you know where he doesn't put a T? In the word winner. Winner, yeah. There's a T right right there. You're missing the opportunity yeah, on. Yeah, but it's like it's hard to get winter. You gotta really you gotta yeah. really say it. I like to I like to you it's know, just like freeze past summer it. and winter. You know what I mean? <laughs> it feels like there's a real flow. Doesn't need to be a lot of tea, you know, spring, summer, winter. Oh my gosh. Okay. So Fall. people saw you in ne as Zanies. You were amazing in Zanies. Right, Does you. no one tour in Montreal anymore? I am going to say, I don't know if you heard this, the Just for Laughs festivals are not happening as much as they used to. Did you used to do those? Would you go to? I did. Yeah. 2018 and 19, I did Just for Laughs mm -hmm. and it was great. Yeah. I, uh, but I, I don't do Canada. My wife's Canadian, uh, but I, uh, I would like to. I just, you know, it's just not happening. Um, okay. Sorry. You guys are running favorite baseball team. What, what, who? Oh, Atlanta Braves. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> hey, come on, guys. America's team. <laughs> 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 um, should alumni be able to work in their old high school? <laughs> Is someone sending me this from jail? This question from <laughs> from prison. Uh, <laughs> hey, so just to legally curious. speaking, <laughs> <laughs> Is this a legal Zoom lawyer who's in a jam? <laughs> like, why are you guys? I mean, probably no. Like, it's a good question. Uh, yeah, you know, I think like you know, maybe you got some allegiance to the school and you you want to give back. You want to support it? I think it's okay. They keep, what is it? I keep getting older. They keep staying the yeah. same age. Well, let's make some character judgments individually. People are saying, why does my voice change? What's going on with their voices? That's just my voice, guys. Sorry. I am this shrill, please. When you come to Japan, I've never done a show. Have you ever done shows in Asia? No, I don't leave the country, really. <laughs> but uh, America, <laughs> yeah. Talk, yeah. yeah. But I would love to go to Japan. That'd be awesome. Japan's pretty wild. Yeah. I'd love to go to Japan. It's very intense. It's a very like intensely codependent culture though. Like you, I didn't really, like if you get out of a cab and you go to close the door, cause I never like service people, like we both worked in the service industry. I never want someone to like wait on me hand and foot or like, do, I'm always like, no, no, I got it. I got it. And I went to go close the door for the cab driver and he got really upset. Wow. It was like insulting if you don't let someone open the door for you or close the door for you. Oh, okay. And so I had trouble. Okay. I like doing things myself. Yeah, I do too. I'm going to carry my own luggage. I'm going to, you know, because the Japanese, they steal. <laughs> <laughs> but but I feel like the ja in Japan, they wouldn't want... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. But they wouldn't want, they wouldn't want tips, I feel like, right? No, they, that's insulting. Right. See, I feel like in America, when someone wants to carry your bag or hold the door, they want a tip. 
Oh, I'll see you guys in Austin. Yes, you will. Can you ask him what's the best glue to sniff? Uh, well, it depends on what you're going for, I, I guess. I mean, rubber uh, cement. Uh, epo epoxy smells really good. Oh, does it? Yeah, it does smell really good. Oh, God, do you like the smell of gasoline? I drank gas one time, <laughs> and uh, I have never liked it since. <laughs> Why did you do that? Well, I was trying to get it out of a lawnmower <laughs> and put it into a four-wheeler, and uh, I, you know, went too hard. <laughs> I don't want to say what you're doing on a hose, but I went too hard. You know, I took too big of a pull. <laughs> and I drank a little gas. And I, you know. That's a man, yeah. Woody Allen, you pussy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's what I want to hear out of a man. Exactly. Oh, show those on, beautiful Woody feet. Allen. No, we're not doing any feet stuff. <laughs> this isn't going on. Okay, so everybody, Dusty Slay's <laughs> new special working man is out. Uh, I can't imagine what it's like to be a woman, though, posting on the internet because no one asked to see my feet. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Or maybe yeah. that, maybe they are asking to I see mean, mine. I mean, honestly, you know what would put an end to it if I just showed my feet? And we might just do it right here because, oh no, did I fuck up IG Live by closing this? Perhaps. I want you guys to know, my feet are so disgusting. Do you have any weird, like, habits that you're oh, trying yeah. to break? Well, I don't know if I'm trying to break them, but I got, I got. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I probably have a lot of weird habits. When I get anxious, I dig out ingrown toenails. Oh, yeah. Okay. And my, t that's toenail polish. But if you see the dried blood on the side, that is from digging out ingrown oh, toenails. Oh, yeah. There's a reason I do not, I'm not an OnlyFans trillionaire because my feet are so disgusting. I like to dig out an ingrown toenail. Dude, too. what? It, that is to, like a like a like a female ejaculation. Yeah. I dug out my boyfriend's ingrown toenail the other day, and it was a guy climax. Yeah, it's good. It is a lot of fun. There's, I got a real picking issue. It's, dude, I'm a real picker. I can, I've got every single tool. The key is to get the cuticle softener. There's also something called baby foot that you can get. Speaking of Japan, it's like a Japanese. Um, product you put on these little socks and they have this whatever schmegma on the inside you leave it on for 45 minutes over the next two weeks your feet like the dead skin will just peel off you're just like molting okay it's amazing all right I'm you'll lose it. like a pound off your foot like when i was in school you would put like elmer's glue on your hands and let it dry so you could <sighs> peel the glue off okay well i used to go I, on the road with bobby lee and he does this like on a regular basis oh he still does still, that yeah, yeah oh, okay yeah, i was yeah. a kid so and, hold uh, <laughs> yeah but uh I <laughs> <laughs> the first thing you do when you tour with bobby lee as soon as you land you got to go to a cvs you get like five things of elmer's glue and watch him just put it on and peel it off wow i was like can louis ck your cough in front of me, please. Yeah. I mean, this is yeah. this is horrible to yeah. watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can Bill Cosby make me a drink? Like I can this, I cannot watch. Yeah, that's wild. That is my major comedy trauma. Um, okay, I've got to let you go. I'm having way too much fun with you. I hope I wasn't too brain dead. Um, a lot of people love you. They're very excited to see you and to watch your special, which is out right now on it Netflix. Is. And there's another one on YouTube. Um, I can't get enough of you, Dusty. Well, thank you. Thank you for I making the time. appreciate you having me. This is really great. What a dream. Yeah. I hope we can con you into coming back. I'd love to. And uh, you're on tour just like crazy? Yeah, I just, you know, I go out every weekend and I try to go home every week. Mm -hmm. I have kids, but uh, yeah, I'm out all the time. Oh, and never see stops. your kids. Yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool take. Do you, one thing I just want to know, do you feel like after you have kids, I'm not saying did you feel less funny, but it, did it take a second to like... Well, I, I I don't know. I feel like I had kids and it like seemed like things were less important. So I don't know if I felt less funny, but I felt less like, uh, like ambitious or something. Yeah. Like less like, I, like, you know, I mean, like now I need to, you know, make money to support my kids, but I'm like, I don't know. It just feels like every, the kids seem like the most important thing. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think it's, I put so much energy into him and then but maybe it's more that because I'm just like, I feel so, and it might just take a second because, you know, it's such a stereotype that comedians are funnier the less happy we are, the more fucked oh, up yeah. we are, you know? And yeah. I, I, I do feel like a lot of comedy comes from, of course, negativity, but also kind of just like, making fun of this person and yeah. and I'm like now that I have a baby and maybe it's just because he's only three months old everyone that's like 
annoying. I'm like, but they were a baby once. Yeah. And like, they didn't get what they needed. Like, yeah. I'm too compassionate and, and I don't know what to do. Yeah, nobody wants to see a truly happy comedian. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's like the whole thing with a clown, right? It's like the clown's ha happy on the surface, but inside you're like, are they? Yeah, yeah, I hope not. Yeah, you know. I hope, but they live in a gutter, right? Yeah. And slash the Achilles heels of children. <laughs> By the way, why, who, like, I'm sorry, like, who, why do horror movies have, now that I have a kid, I'm like, why do any of these exist? Why do any <laughs> of the movies exist? Like, why? I'm, <laughs> I'm watching, I'm watching Disney movies that I grew up with and Horrifying. love. And I'm like, why is there, why are the parents dying in always, every movie? Always, always. Is it like Disney's way of going, hey, parents, we got you. We're going to make them appreciate you. Yeah, maybe. I always thought it was maybe that. Because it's like, oh, well, that's you know? a good point. Because then they leave me like, dad, I hope you never die. Like, I'm, you know. Yeah, because I was like, the other day I was like, we could watch, I don't know if this is Disney, but I was like, we could watch Finding Nemo. That would be really great. And the opening is like, you know, the mom and all the siblings dying. And uh, I was like, oh, gosh. Disney guys. movies more like finding ball sacks in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, guys, take it down a notch with the castles being made of dicks. I mean, <laughs> it is kind of what it's like. There are no vaginas either, uh, yeah. which is kind of interesting. Yeah, I can find a vagina anywhere. Like every Rorschach test is going to be a vagina for me. But the Disney movies, it's just dicks everywhere. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, they're out there. There's one. <laughs> there's one cartoon. I don't know what it is, but like they're talking to a guy. He's like a king or a or something. And he's like getting a boner while they're talking. What is it? A little Mermaid? Yeah, I'm like, what's going on there? How did you know that, Matt? How? How, but how did you know that so fast? Because it was like four or five of them. Like Aladdin one, the one with 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 the one yeah, we're Sick, on the tap Matt. out here. I didn't yeah, know, we're on the tap I didn't know it was like that, yeah. Matt. We're, we're going to get along just fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then, the, oh, the Lion King butt, the butt in the sunset. It spells out sex. There's that, but there's also the butt of on the poster or something. But like, what? Okay, but it's obviously just animators that were pissed off, right? Because it's like, you think Disney's like... Or maybe not a, even pissed off. Maybe just like, they're like, just having some fun. Maybe. The best case scenario, they're just having some fun. They're having some fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They didn't get their vacation days that year. Their yeah. boss is a dickhead. Yeah. Because my thing is like, I'm the first to jump into a conspiracy about something like this. But it's like, I just don't think that humans have the ability to keep secrets enough for it to be like a big concerted effort to be like, let's put dicks in the mermaid castle so that They'll and, want to suck our dicks, and maybe the uh, the the main editor doesn't want to be like. There's a lot of <laughs> <laughs> because they'll be like, "Are you seeing? No, there's not. No, you, we didn't. What? Yeah, yeah. No one wants to be the person that noticed yeah. it. Oh, this guy just sees dicks everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's like the spire of a castle. <laughs> like, that, is that how your dick looks? <laughs> that's the most important part of this. Yeah. <laughs> is that the dick looks, that's the person's dick who did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like the guy that ran it was uncircumcised. So he's yeah. like, what's that? Like, no, I don't, I, don't say anything, I don't say anything weird about this. That's it. Oh, God. That is so I guess the real takeaway is that dicks look so different that no yeah. one caught it. Yeah, maybe there's a lot of variety. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen the most dicks of anyone in this room. I feel like I maybe, don't you think? I would think so. In person. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would think so. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think that's fair to say. Yeah, I guess they do vary, but I, that's so funny to me. The idea that certain people didn't catch it because their dick just doesn't look like that. Because it is one, it is one guy that. Yeah. Because all the dicks look like that. 
Yeah, I mean, maybe, yeah. We've I mean, narrowed this- it down. The idea that someone's like, we figured out what's, we need to figure out which animated animator did this. Yeah. We need to see all of your dicks. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, so a lot, there's a lot going on. There's a lot, lot to uncover. All right. I have got to let you go. I'm being so selfish. Um, I love you guys very much. Dusty Slay, working man. I We wore the same shirt in our last specials. All right. Yeah, I wore a denim shirt too. Looks better on you. Look. We actually look pretty similar in our last specials. <laughs> you have a hat? Huh? No, I didn't wear a hat. Not cool enough to pull that off. Um, I end these very awkwardly. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Thank We're you. A good time. Love you guys. Don't ride elephants. Bye.